Hi, I'm James, and today I'm taking a look at another Dell laptop. In this case, it is the Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series system, and this is the 3501 model, and this is the Intel Core i3 1115G4 processor based machine. This laptop was picked up in the Black Friday deals and came in just under the £400 mark with that Core i3 processor, 11th Gen Tiger Lake chip, a 4GB of RAM configuration with a single 4GB DIMM uh, of DDR4 2666MHz memory and a 256GB hard drive, or SSD I should say. And we also have Windows 10 in S mode, so this means it is restricted to running applications from the App Store and it is fairly as you would expect for what is Dell's entry line of Inspiron laptops. So looking around the outer of the machine we have this grey plastic uh, chassis and this has a sort of lightly textured slightly rough finish to it with our Dell logo in a shiny finish and this is the same on the back with speakers in the front bottom corners, intake vent on the base and exhausting out the rear of the laptop here. Turning our attention to the sides of the machines, and on the left we have our power connector, which in this case is a standard Dell 45 watt power brick. We have HDMI, a ethernet port, which is on a small hinge connector, so obviously be careful not to damage that, but just to bring the thickness of the laptop down, uh, obviously getting a full size ethernet port in there is not an easy task these days. We also have a pair of USB 3 ports and a headphone jack. Now slightly disappointingly these USB ports are only USB 3.2 Gen 1, so these are the lowest speed USB 3 ports of 5 gigabits per second. There is no USB-C port on this model of laptop. Uh, they do offer it, but only on versions which have an NVIDIA graphics card, uh, which I don't believe any of the models currently on sale in the UK have. And in fact, even this i3 model currently isn't available, only i5 and i7 models. Turning our attention to the right-hand side, and we have our Kensington lock attachment, a USB 2 port, so if you are connecting higher speed devices, always make sure you plug them in on the left-hand side and an SD card reader. And that is really it for ports on this device. Finally, looking at the back, we can see the exhaust vent for the system, sitting slightly off center. So, you know, if you're particularly upset about such things and demand symmetry from the back of your laptop, watch out. Looking inside, we have a chiclet style keyboard. We have a fairly traditional UK style layout here with our function keys which primarily work as hotkeys for volume, brightness and so on. We have the fingerprint scanner which I believe is the same as in the uh, Dell Inspiron 14 5000 series 2-in-1 I recently looked at which I found quite good and accurate. We have our touchpad which is reasonable size, not huge but and slightly offset so it lines up under the keyboard not properly centralised which is good for me in how I like it. Um, it could you know, be going a bit more to the edges, but again, entry-level laptop, as you would kind of expect. You have a numpad, so because it's a 15-inch machine, there is room for that. Then looking at the screen side of things, um, Dell do appear to have slightly thinned down the bezels compared to some of their early attempts or earlier uh, Inspiron 15 3000 series machines, but you still have a reasonable amount of plastic here fairly big chin at the base and you know room for the webcam at the top and microphone so while it is not a huge footprint compared to some of their earlier efforts which had quite chunky bezels it's still not like an edge-to-edge -edge display like you're going to see on some of the, the higher end models that they sell. The screen itself is 1080p and they brand it as a wide viewing angle display uh, they don't specify the technology used in this panel um, but I would guess, you know, it doesn't look like a basic TN laptop screen. Uh, it does have reasonable brightness and viewing angles don't shift too badly off center. So compared to some of the sort of your, your cheaper systems, it's, it's not the most basic display you'll see. It's obviously not, you know, a 4K display with incredible brightness levels. 
but if for a price of under £400 it's pretty good compared to a lot of the competition I've seen such as some of the lower end Lenovo idea pad systems at this price point. Turning our attention to the Windows build that ships on this system and we can see that the computer comes with Windows 10 Home in S mode. We can easily upgrade that through to the full Windows 10 Home through the Windows Store and I do have a video on my channel for how to do this. Um, we ship with the 2004 build of Windows 10, so one behind the current, uh, but Windows Update will shortly sort that after you first set the system up. Looking at the pre-installed apps on the system, and because again this ships in Windows S mode, we do not get a lot of pre-installed software on here. We have Dell Customer Connect and Dell Mobile Connect, and there is McAfee Personal Security pre-installed, but this will only activate after you move the system out of S mode, as default, it uses Windows Defender, and that is, I believe, the only option when you're operating in S mode. To test battery life, I ran my own battery test using Google Chrome and a sequence of HTML5 tests. And we ran this for just over an hour and saw battery level drop from 100% down to 83%. Um, this I then have extrapolated out which gave a total runtime of around six and three quarter hours. Um, obviously this isn't the most demanding test, it was run with 50% brightness and there is no sound in the test as it runs. Um, so you will find you know, for more demanding tasks your battery life will be less than this. But for light usage, I would certainly expect life in the six to seven hour region with the system as new. So what are my first thoughts on the Dell Inspiron 15 3000 3501 laptop? Well, here in the UK, it currently doesn't represent great value. This i3 model is not available at the moment. Uh, the range starts at an i5 1135G7 processor with eight gigs of RAM, and that comes in at £600 currently, which feels rather expensive for what is their entry-level machine. You should be able to pick up something similar to this for under the £500 mark, potentially just with the 10th gen or a Ryzen processor instead, and I would possibly err towards a Ryzen 4000 series instead of Tiger Lake. There isn't necessarily a huge amount between them, but for me, the Ryzen chips edge it. Um, also, uh, what this came in at, okay, it was a little under £400 that I paid for this, but four gigabytes of RAM is disappointing. Uh, I will be doing a video looking at how to upgrade this to eight gigabytes, or in fact, 16 gigabytes in my case, and also whether we can fit DDR4 3200 RAM into this system as the use of 2666 MHz memory on a Tiger Lake machine, particularly when you're looking at that Core i5 or even the i7 based models, they all use 2666, which is really going to hurt the performance and all single channel memory on these as well. So it really depends on the models that are available at the time and what you can find them for price wise. But I would say overall, I would not recommend this with the current models available here in the UK and the current pricing. That may of course change if this particular model with the i3 comes available on the UK market at the same sort of price I paid for it. I hope you found this video useful. Do check out my other videos on the machine where I'll be looking at the upgrade and repair options for it, along with performance compared to the AMD Ryzen processors and the Core i5 in the Tiger Lake range. Hit subscribe if you would like to see those videos as they come up, and any questions you have, ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.